Hi, welcome to Infrared Learning, your quickest way to learn thermography. For this video, we will show you the basic operational tutorial of FLIR GF series. Charge the battery for 3 hours before the first use. The lights on the battery will blink while they're charging and turn solid once fully charged and ready for use. At the back of the camera, you can see a USB port which is used for downloading images and videos to the PC and streaming videos to our PC software such as FLIR Tools and FLIR Tools Plus. You'll also find an HDMI port for streaming videos to your TV or projector. Note, this kind of thermal imaging cameras does not have an internal memory, so be sure to install a card right away. Insert your battery. Do not replace the battery while the camera is in classified or hazardous area. An explosion can happen. This can cause injury or death to persons and damage to the equipment. Close the back of the camera using the torque screw. It's recommended to register the camera as soon as possible. Registration will typically extend the warranty of the thermal imager. The GF series cameras must be registered in order to create the unlock code that is required to use the camera. Registration can be done on the FLIR Support Center website. To access the page, go to the support.flir.com. Select the product registration to sign up for a new account. Or you may log in if you have an existing account. Once you log in, click here to validate your camera serial number which can be found either on the calibration certificate or on the camera housing inside the battery compartment. Support Center is also where you can download the FLIR software such as FLIR tools. The software can be used for analyzing images, videos, and sequences, and for creating inspection reports. We prepared another tutorial video for FLIR tools Feel free to watch it. The camera is ergonomically designed with a rotating LCD screen, tiltable viewfinder, and a rotating hand grip. These ergonomic features of the camera allow the user to move freely even for a long day. Remove the lens cap and switch on the camera. The FLIR GF series are cooled cameras and the detectors require cryogenic cooling. Once it reaches cool down temperature, you will hear the motor slow down and it will begin to display a live infrared image. Rotate your mode wheels for easy access of your menu. Toggle the joystick left and right or up and down to navigate the settings. Set the language, date, and time for proper documentation. Set your distance unit in meter or foot. You can change the temperature unit into Celsius or Fahrenheit. On the setup menu, we have the video file format, Video File Overlay, Display Selection, HDMI Format, LCD Intensity, Viewfinder Intensity, USB Mode, and GPS. On Preferences menu, we have the Simultaneous Snapshots, Programmable Button, Image Overlay Information, Text Size, and Temperature Scale Stamp. And last is the camera information that contains the part number, work folder, memory card, lens, battery percentage, export, and components. The camera mode is for live imaging and capturing still photos. Press the S or save button to capture an image. To save an image, select the disk icon 
then push in the joystick. To delete the image, select the trash icon, then push in the joystick. Press the thermometer button on top of the camera to adjust your temperature range. You can then toggle between ranges using the joystick moving up or down. Or you can just press the menu back button, then navigate the camera menu, then choose the adjust temp range. The range covers an interval of temperature that the detector is able to measure accurately without going into saturation. Choose a suitable range for your target and environment and then work within that range to get the best thermal contrast. You can also turn your camera lamp on and off by pressing the visual image button and selecting the digital camera lamp. The lamps will come in handy in getting better digital images of an area or object being inspected in dark places. However, the lamps are only applicable when in digital mode. The invert polarity will change the color assignment on the frame. Example, using the lava palette. Orange means hot and blue means cold. Switching on the invert polarity will change the color assignment. Orange means cold and blue means hot. Select the menu back button and using the joystick, navigate the image settings then color palette. You'll have different options such as Arctic, Gray, Iron, Lava, Rainbow High Contrast, and Rainbow. Or simply press the Programmable button or P button for easy access of the color palettes. To access the measurement tools, press the menu back button, then navigate the Edit tab. You'll find the Spot Meter to know the temperature of a certain spot, an area box for recording maximum, minimum, and average temperatures in the area of interest, a delta T function for evaluating temperature differences, and a line profile to analyze temperature variations across a linear path. You also need to adjust the object parameters accordingly. This includes the values for emissivity, reflected temperature, object distance, atmospheric temperature, and relative humidity. These parameters affect the temperature readings, especially emissivity and the reflected temperature. Therefore, it is important to set them correctly. With our collection of special courses, you will understand how each of the parameters affects the temperature reading and how to set them correctly. Be sure to check them out. There are three options to adjust the thermal contrast. These are Auto, Manual, and HSM or High Sensitivity Mode. By default, the camera is set to Automatic Adjustment Mode. This will automatically set the scale based on the hottest and coldest object in the frame. Selecting Manual will allow you to customize the scale settings. The level or brightness and span or contrast of the image can be adjusted using the joystick. Push left and right to adjust the scale. HSM or High Sensitivity Mode increases the camera's detect ability by about 5 times using image subtraction to find subtle changes between frames. You can change the sensitivity by moving the joystick left and right. To record the video, turn the mode wheel to video. The video mode is for recording video clips and sequences. Press the S or save button to start recording. To stop recording, press the S or save button once again. Select the disc icon to save the video. Select the trash icon to delete the video. The video mode is recommended for detecting gas leaks. You can use different color palettes and you can also switch into Auto, Manual, or HSM. The Archive mode is for playback and save images, video clips, and sequences. To delete an image, select the trash icon, then push in the joystick. 
This optional hardware allows you to quantify gas leaks from video sequences recorded while using this mode. This feature works with quantification software like IRGAS Retina. Adjust the focus by turning the lens barrel in front of your camera until you obtain the proper focus. Press the laser button on the side of the lens barrel to switch on or off. The laser will guide the user on their point of interest without getting closer to the subject. Press the visual image button located below the laser button to activate your digital camera. When using the viewfinder, it is important to adjust the diopter. This is a small focus control to adjust the clarity of the screen inside. You cannot use the viewfinder and the screen at the same time. Non-uniformity correction adjusts minor detector drift that occurs as the scene and environment change. Correctly performing NUC gives a balanced and stable detector and produces higher quality images. All FLIR thermal cameras, including the GIF series, perform NUC automatically. The shutter acts as a flat reference source for the detector to calibrate itself and thermally stabilize. You can also perform the NUC manually by putting the lens cap on and hold the auto or manual button for one second. This procedure is recommended when changing environment or changing the temperature range. When detecting very small gas leaks, a seen NUC is applicable. This is done by doing the NUC manually without covering the lens. However, this technique is only effective if your background is consistent and not moving. The gas compounds have varying absorbance at different wavelengths. The unique spectral filtering of the FLIR GF series are optimized to accurately see the gases with similar properties. The GFX320 is certified by the IEC or International Electrotechnical Commission and can be used for explosive environment. Before you go on the field for inspection, make sure to do a general checkup of your device. Your camera should be turning on. Battery is charged. Completes the cooldown process and produces a live infrared image does not report any error messages on startup. Also make sure that the camera focuses properly and can engage the high sensitivity mode or HSM. For gas detection only, recalibration is not required. The ability to detect gases is not influenced by the calibration and will not degrade over time. But for temperature measurement, Annual recalibration is recommended. And that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you've learned something today. If you want to learn more, watch out for the next video. Take care.